Hello again, it's me Lenning, and welcome to VTV International's weekly culture journal, Culture Mosaic, where we keep you updated with the latest cultural news from around the country. Now, in today's show, we'll get to know a talented Hanoian who creates art out of glass. Before talking to young and passionate American student performers who have just wrapped up their Asian tour in Vietnam. And last but not least, let's check out how Vietnamese brocade is being embraced in the hands of an Australian artisan. Hanoi men mold art out of glass. Young Bryan University ambassadors share their thoughts. From Vietnamese brocade to future traditions. Now local news comes first with the most outstanding cultural events of the last week. Representatives of Anjang Province Muslim community held a ceremony to begin the month of Ramadan at the Mubarak Mosque in Tan Chau Tian on Wednesday. Attending the ceremony were the local authorities' Muslim leaders. Ramadan, which falls in the ninth month of the Islamic calendar, has special meaning to the Islamic Cham community. On these days, Islamic followers from 15 years of age obtained from food and drink during the daytime in order to understand the lives led by poor people and to become better citizens. The Islamic Cham ethnic community in Anjiang is one of the province of four largest ethnic groups, along with the king, the Chinese and the Khmer. Now, upholding the values of royal court music has always been a top priority for artists in the central city of Hue. With significant accolades earned at the recently held Traditional Music and Instrument Festival 2014 in Lâm Đồng, Hue's royal court music artists can continue to take pride in bringing the traditional music closer to audiences. <laughs> This is an excerpt from the ensemble entitled The Worship of Heaven and Earth, one of the pieces that Hui's Royal Court of Musicians performed for the Traditional Musical Instrument Festival 2014, competing against 154 other performances. From 25 participating art troops, this was the performance that earned them a gold medal. và chúng tôi cũng đã thể hiện hết mình với vai trò là những nhạc công và đạt được những thành tích phải nói là rất là vui mừng và cảm xúc của chúng tôi là phải nói là không có gì tả được và rất mong muốn trong cái thời gian tới Bộ Văn hóa Thể thao và Du lịch và những cái đơn vị tạo mọi điều kiện để chúng tôi những cái người nhạc công tham gia nhiều hơn nữa. Another performance representing Hui's royal court music, entitled Filial Duty from Finland, was also highly praised by the judges at the festival and earned a simple medal. Ban tổ chức cuộc thi đánh giá rất là cao, đánh giá cao. Cái thứ nhất là những cái bài bản chúng tôi đưa ra là mới lạ. Cái thứ hai là cái kỹ năng diễn tấu của nhạc công của nhà hát thì đã cũng đã được thế giới công nhận là di sản văn hóa phi vật thể của đại diện của nhân loại và hai nữa được công chúng trong nước cũng đã để ý đến và cũng đã quan tâm theo dõi ý đến. Together with local artists' efforts to revive this unique performance genre, many projects to preserve and uphold the values of his royal court music have been implemented, inspiring artists to pursue their passions for the art thì ngay tại nhà hát của chúng tôi cũng đã có những cái kế hoạch rất là dài lâu một mặt là luôn luôn cho những nhạc công tập huấn với những nghệ nhân nghệ sĩ với những cái sưu tầm những cái bài bản cổ để phục hồi lại 
In 2003, UNESCO recognized the Huiroi Court Music as a masterpiece of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity. These moves have proven successful in keeping the traditional art alive and bringing it closer to local and overseas audiences. The sixth Selmai Diem Hit or Morning Star Rendezvous television singing contest will kick off on July the 4th and will be broadcast live on VTV6. Now, this announcement was made at a press conference on Wednesday afternoon. Also announced at the press conference were the names of the 12 contestants who will enter the final round. This year's television contest will span eight live shows and will cover various music genres and styles, from pop, rock and hip-hop to performing duets and foreign songs. This year, the Morning Star Rendezvous contest will take place in Vietnam Television's outdoor studio and will be broadcast live every Friday night at 7 p.m. on VTV6 channel. An exhibition of 30 lacquer paintings by Vietnamese artists opened at the State Museum of Oriental Art in Moscow, Russia on Wednesday. The exhibition is the first of a series of activities within the Vietnamese Culture Days in Russia, which is scheduled to run through July the 1st. This is the first time this painting has been presented to an international audience. These artworks by the Sonta Group create an opportunity to introduce a uniquely Vietnamese creative space to Russia's people. Nhưng ở đây là chúng ta dùng cái chất là cái chất chính chất những cây vẽ ở đây tại sao gọi sân mài là vẽ bằng mài tức người ta phủ xong rồi người ta mài mới lộ ra thì thì nó mới 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 hình thành tranh cho nên cái kỹ thuật nó cực kỳ phải phải nói là phải rất giỏi thì mới vẽ được loại tranh này à, chúng tôi đem tranh đi là thứ nhất về chất lượng về sơn ta là phải thuần khiết tôi cũng hơi bất ngờ về khi đem sang đây vì khi tôi vừa mới tháo rỡ ra thì các công chúng đã đến xem và rất thì là xúc động và ngạc nhiên và thấy là chất lượng và họ cũng cũng đã hỏi rất nhiều về cái cái lĩnh vực của mình về sơn sơn ta. The works on display enthrall the viewers with glazes of eggshell, orchid, silver and gold, and the material seems limitless in its ability to express any style, idea or subject. I've heard a lot about Vietnamese lacquer painting, but this is the first time I've been able to see it. I'm impressed by the beauty and form of these paintings, as well as the technique. I just talked to one of the artists and he carefully explained the painting process to me. I think it's very intriguing and I really admire Vietnamese artists for being able to use new and unique methods to create traditional like a paintings. According to the direct of State Museum of Orient Art, it is the first exhibition of Vietnamese artwork here in nearly 10 years. The exhibition is expected to be the start of future artistic exchanges between the museum and the Vietnam Forest Museum. Now you've probably heard of stained glass or even the art of glass blowing from Murano, Italy. This edition of Culture and Lifestyle will introduce you to a Hanoian man who is known in Vietnam for creating glass paintings and the delicate craft of engraving. So let's have a look. What appears as an illuminated painting is actually all glass carved and polished to create texture and depth. Meet Phạm Hồng Vinh, considered Vietnam's top connoisseur of glass paintings, which all began with simple sketches such as this. The sketching is then scanned into a computer design system, where Mr. Vinh will outline his drawing with vectors. 24 years in the trade now, Mr. Ving, the first to make glass painting in Vietnam, says such technology have made his job much easier. 
A specialized laser printer will then etch the outlines onto a sheet of sticky back plastic, and this in turn will be pasted onto the glass to create the base for carving to begin. Trước là mình làm nghề gốm sứ và mình tạo ra một cái các cái thể loại tranh tranh sứ tranh trên cái chất liệu bằng sứ nung phẳng đấy. Thế thì sau sau khi bỏ cái nghề sứ này thì mình mới chuyển sang là mình mới sử dụng cái cái tấm kính ấy, để thay cho cái tấm sứ mình vào mình mình mài mình vẽ mình khắc ở trên cái cái tấm kính đấy và mình tạo màu vào thì nó như tranh sứ. After that, it's off to the dusty part, where artisans will use the force of sand in a sandblast gun to carve onto the glass sheet. Artisan Ving will then polish the carving to ensure a smooth surface to the meticulous etching. An essential step in the eight-part routine is painting to ensure not only vibrant but also sustainable coloring for the glass. Hai Ha here has been an artisan in Mr. Ving's workshop for 10 years. It's a job that requires artistic eyes, she says. Mua mình sơn sơn họa tiết ở tranh ấy, mà mình phải vẽ ngược hoàn toàn vẽ ngược bằng trí tưởng tượng của mình nên cái đấy nó rất là khó, nó cũng không giống như là những cái sản phẩm khác. Ví dụ họ vẽ thì họ có thể nhìn trực tiếp đập màu chấm màu lên nhưng mà sản phẩm tranh kính này là phải vẽ bằng ngược. The result is what Mr. Ving calls both beautiful and durable glass. Khi mình sơn ấy, thì là mình phải sơn mặt này. Nhưng mà khi cái mặt chính thì là ở mặt bên này. Thế còn cái sau khi mình vẽ cái màu này xong rồi mình phải cho vào lò mình nung lên ở 700 độ thì cái màu nó mới chảy ra, nó bám vào cái cái bề mặt thủy tinh này. Thế và nó có thể chịu được mưa, gió, được các loại hóa chất hoặc là chịu được các cái va đập rất là mạnh. Thì người ta gọi là tranh bền vĩnh kiểu. Thanks to their durability, Mr. Ving's glass artwork has been incorporated mostly in housing design, adding fresh splashes of colors and dimension to spaces. Now, Mr. Ving's glass art is not only utilized in modern architecture in houses such as being a divider or a ceiling, but it is also an augmentation to historical architecture such as this. Now, this is a church that dates back to 1918. It's the Chuksun Church in the easternmost part of the capital city of Hanoi. And we'll see in the following how it is utilized in this church. Today, Mr. Ving is meeting with the members of the church to discuss installing new glasswork onto the front window. He has already helped the church to renovate and create glass for many of the older windows. Là kính thì nó là kính cường lực, thì có thể là vụt vỡ thì không thể vụt vỡ được. Và nó cường lực rất là cao. Một cái tính đặc thù riêng nữa là 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 là. Để khi mỗi người nhìn lên đấy là một cái lời dạy của giới dân hay là cái nhìn ở đấy là nhìn tượng đã biết được hiểu thêm về đạo hơn. For Mr. Ving, the process of making glass paintings have allowed him to not only strive for high quality and sustainable glass work, but also to contribute to restoring such long-standing buildings as well as adding new design features to Vietnam's architecture. Thuy Dương, Vietnam Television, Hanoi. You're tuning in to Culture Mosaic, a weekly journal featuring the rich cultural diversity of Vietnam and vibrant international cultural events happening around the country. We hope to become the bridge connecting artists and the words with our viewers out there. So don't go away. We have a lot more in this week's installment coming for you in just a moment. An art troupe of young and passionate students from Brian Young University in the U.S. stage of Uta had just wrapped up their Asian tour in Thailand, Cambodia and Vietnam. The group is called BYU Young Ambassadors. 
and has spanned over 40 years dazzling audiences in 67 countries with their charismatic and energy-packed displays of music, dance and theater. On the mic this week has an exclusive interview with the group's artistic directors and two performers. In the new 90-minute musical review, audiences had a chance to see 20 of BYU's finest singers, actors and dancers performing some of the most popular musical numbers from Broadway hits, such as Singing in the Rain, Crazy for You, Brotherly Modern Millie, Into the Woods, Dreamgirls and Brotherhood of Man. The Young Ambassadors Ensemble is produced by the School of Music in the College of Fine Arts and Communications at Brigham Young University. Brian Booth, the Artistic Directors and two Brigham Young Ambassador performers, thank you very much for coming to our studio today. Thank, thank you. you. My first question for you is, why do you choose Vietnam as part of your Asian tour this time? We have a lot of ties uh, at BYU with uh, Vietnam. Uh, through the years, we've been able to come here to present performances. The Young Ambassadors were last here in 1999, so it's been a long time. But other uh, groups from BYU have been here regularly. And our students come here every summer for an internship with the uh, Vietnam Opera Company, and they play in the orchestra. And so we have had these wonderful ties, and we want to continue strengthening those ties because we love Vietnam and the people, and we've had so many great experiences. We want to continue that uh, tradition with BYU and Vietnam. What did you prepare for the two performances in Ho Chi Minh City and in Hanoi? We have been rehearsing for about eight months since last August, and we perform musical theater pieces from Broadway musicals. We perform songs from Michael Jackson and old songs from the Beatles, lots of- Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley. They're all focused on love. All of our, our whole show is, is focused on love and the relationships that we have. Um, so we've been, getting this show ready for a long time to be able to come and, and have it be in a good, in a good shape so that we can um, do the best for the people here. We've taken the time to translate all of the transitions that kind of set up the whole concept of love and, and the music of our hearts that we need to listen to more often. And all of those things were an effort to, to meet our audiences in Vietnam, in Cambodia, in Thailand, more than halfway so that they're not just sitting there looking at an American group going, well, who are these people? What are they singing about? What is all this? It's so strange and unusual. We tried to choose numbers that are very international. I mean, everybody knows Michael Jackson. And the minute we start singing Man in the Mirror, everybody starts singing along out in the audience, you know? So that kind of preparation in advance, I think, has been helpful to meet our audiences. So the main theme uh, throughout the performance is love. Why is love? I think love is the main theme of life. If you gotta have heart and a music, heart and a music and along. You gotta have heart and music, you gotta have heart and a music, heart and a music make a song. been traveling around the world since 1970. The BYU Young Ambassadors entered the international spotlight at Expo 70 in Osaka, Japan. And I happened to be there as a freshman in college. <laughs> I was uh, 18 years old, just turning 19 while I was actually on tour. And that was kind of the beginning for me, uh, experiencing the world. We traveled through, on that first trip, to Korea, Thailand, Taiwan, the Philippines, and spent a long time in Japan. And since that time, the group has toured to 67 countries. Uh, Cambodia, on this recent tour, just last week, was our 67th country that we visited. And, you know, 
we travel the world, we eat interesting food, we see wonderful songs and dances and theater from many different nations. And there are lots of things that are unique and different, but we have far more that is the same between peoples of the world than differences. And we're very excited about building friendship ties through the medium of music and dance. It's a universal language. I was very impressed by the energy and the good vibes that you put into each song and each performance. But you are all students, not professional performers, right? Mm -hmm. We're all full-time students, and we audition to be on this group. And it, it takes a, as much time as our classes take. This takes about the same amount of time. But we all love it, and we love working together and getting to create uh, music and performances together. And we hope that that shows on stage, the fun that we have together with the band and with our technicians all working together to put on a good show and express our love um, and our friendship through music. So what is the most challenging thing to put together a big group of student performers but achieve such a high standard in performing like this? Well, my challenge is that there are so many talented students. How can I choose just... 20 singer-dancers, because I'll have over 100 who want to have the experience, over 100 people that want to come to Vietnam and want to come to Cambodia and to Thailand, and I can only choose 10 women and 10 men. And uh, they're very well prepared. Um, most of the students at Brigham Young University are... Uh, come from strong families, where their families have encouraged them to develop their talents. So Bailey had dance lessons when she was a little girl for many years, and singing lessons, and, and uh, Taylor was involved in school musicals at the local high schools, and singing in choirs, and, and so they're just very involved growing up in all the performing arts, and they've had a lot of personal training, so once they get to the university, uh, if they choose one of the performing arts as their major, then they get really intense in their training and develop a lot of flexibility. So it's a tough job for me to decide who am I going to really take because there's so many possibilities. I love it. It's amazing. Uh, we get to work with a lot of great people, and we get to play in play amazing places like this. It's a great experience. So are you a music student? Sort of. Uh, I'm studying psychology, but I'm... I'd like to do music on the side because I love it. I'm majoring in information systems. Being a member of the Young Ambassadors has always been a, a dream and a passion for me to do. And so I'm grateful for the opportunity I have to be part of this great group. This is my fourth year at BYU, and this is my first year as a Young Ambassador. It is so much fun. It's a dream come true. I've, I've always wanted to be on Young Ambassadors since I was about six years old. So it's a lot of fun. My, um, my husband's in the group as well. And so that's been a lot of fun to be able to travel together and come to this beautiful land together. Performers also surprised Vietnamese audiences with their final song, Chung Cơm, which they practiced only several days before the performance. Everyone loved it, joined right in with us, clapped along, helped us with our lyrics. <laughs> Why do you choose that Chung Cơm song to perform in front of Vietnamese audiences? Is there anyone to consult you about that? Some of our Vietnamese friends that we've worked with in recent years, and they gave us a whole list of songs, and almost we maybe asked five different people, and on the list of all of them, that was the common song. There were lots of other possibilities, but they felt that it was so well known. I mean, I, it's an older song, but it was so well known. And then we saw on YouTube some fairly contemporary performances of it. We thought, Okay, so we should probably do this. So I've heard these two sitting right behind me in the bus for the last three days, just singing the words, <laughs> singing the words, singing the words. And uh, didn't you want to do a little impromptu oh. performance of the first two lines? Okay. Ding. Mm. Ready? Ding bong ga gai john kong can I cow for oh my bowman and bong oh my bowman and bong Mok by the ding kong me Mok by the ding kong me oh my lord 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 oh my ding and yak of pie Mok up on my lady Mok up on my lady
Brocade is an important part of Vietnamese ethnic pupils of vibrant cultures. Cynthia Mann, an Australian fashion designer, has started a fashion brand named Future Traditions using Vietnamese brocade and Western designs. Let's find out more about Cynthia and her innovative fashion brand. This is the newly released summer collection from Future Traditions. Modern dresses and skirts, elegant embroidery, all laid out on brocade fabric. If you love brocade and want to wear it away from the office to hang out with friends, Future Traditions will offer you the perfect choice. My mother was a fashion designer and my father was a um, graphic um, artist and so I grew up, um, I learnt to sew as... Okay, well I was looking for something that reflected my, I guess, desire to give these traditional crafts a future. It's kind of bringing, um, giving traditional crafts a future. Cynthia first came to Vietnam in 2003. After a few trips through the country's northern mountainous region and a visit to Bac Ha Fair, she was really impressed by the vivid colors of ethnic people's traditional costumes in the region. After each trip, Cynthia took home some brocade or even traditional costumes. And it was those items that inspired her to start work on a new collection. Look, I use um, mostly a lot of um, uh, batik to come, um, and that's probably the main um, uh, textile that I'm using at the moment. Um, but I'm starting to use some hand woven. Um, fabrics as well. Um, I'm very interested to work with some of the local communities. Um, I met some uh, two Red Zao sisters up in Baka recently. I'm keen to work with them and their community to do some embroidery on some of the work that I'm doing. Her passion for fashion and love of Vietnam's beauty have also inspired Cynthia to make accessories for each outfit. These necklaces and earrings are all made from seashells or ceramic pieces collected from Vietnamese beaches. Cynthia always tries to retain the shapes of the seashells, saying the sea has already carved them into perfect forms. This diversity has attracted customers who want to find out more about Cynthia. Many customers, mostly expats, buy future traditions designs. They say the designs are not just souvenirs, but also comfortable everyday clothing. Yeah. And the jackets. And with the jacket... What, what I really like is this bit of um, Vietnamese pattern that um, she very elegantly, and I think very respectfully, um, has included in the, in the dress. So this is certainly something I will try, try on and, and, um, and have a look. So it's really good for my work. I work in an office. So for myself, I was particularly drawn to this fine handmade hat, um, and I hope that it fits. There you go. I'll be sure to wear this when I'm walking through the streets of Hanoi. The combination of brocade and western styles has proved effective via the success of future traditions. Cynthia is also working on developing projects with other traditional handmade woven fabric in Vietnam. Having visited many countries, Cynthia has chosen to settle in Vietnam. She sees it as a second home and always strives to promote Vietnamese culture to the world through her designs.